Hi, today I'm reviewing the Biore Aqua Rich Watery Gel Sunscreen. And really quick, I just want to say I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com. Check out my Patreon community or click on the Amazon link below. Okay, so this is one of the sunscreens I've been asked about quite a bit to review. This one and the Essence, which I will also review um, later on this week, I think. So uh, anyway, so finally getting t around to it. Uh, for those interested, uh, you can pick these up on yesstyle.com, although it's under the manufacturer name Kao, K-A-O, instead of Biore, which some people might find helpful, easier to find. So K-A-O dash Biore, I think that's the manufacturer. Um, so they call this a lightweight gel sunscreen, which boasts a strong protection against UV rays thanks to its micro defense system. Formulated with hyaluronic acid and royal jelly extract, it's easy to apply watery gel texture, also moisturizes and soothes skin. Some of that I agree with and some of that might be a bit far-fetched. So let me just start with my first criteria, which is packaging. And they've used a nice kind of squeeze tube bottle, which... Uh, very efficient and effective, although it's it's larger. This seems larger than most sunscreens, so. Although I think it would be official to travel with if you're ever gonna travel again, so. Anyway, so no issues with that. Denatured alcohol. This is, I think, the biggest issue I have with this one is it does have a lot of denatured al alcohol. They call it ethanol. It's the second degree in the formula, so that means there's quite a bit of it which uh, gives it some of its aesthetically pleasing properties, actually, uh, because it soaks in quickly. It doesn't feel oily or greasy. So um, it also contains polyvinyl alcohol, which is another alcohol that can be potentially irritating. Polyvinyl alcohol is commonly used in peel-off masks, which I always avoid, like the plague. I avoid those masks. They just never, never for me did anything good. So although they're some people find them fun or whatever. They glitter in them, whatever. Um, it's also, polyvinyl alcohol is also found in paper making. Due to the vinyl polymers, it has the ability to form a thin layer of plastic on top of skin. Um, I will say that, in my opinion, this is better off if you like this sunscreen and you haven't found a good one otherwise. You're better off using this, even though it contains a lot of alcohol, than no sunscreen at all. In my opinion, you can help kind of buffer some of it by applying a good, really good moisturizer with it or a good hydrating serum that can kind of help negate some of the effects of the alcohol. Um, so kind of tricky, but uh, I guess in my opinion, you're better off using it than not a sunscreen at all. So if you like this and there's no other sunscreen you find that you like that doesn't have a lot of alcohol in it, you're still better off using it than nothing. Um, so, um, okay, then we get to my third criteria, which is fragrance. It does include fragrance. It's the very last ingredient, thankfully. Uh, it has a light floral scent, and it mostly dissipates in about 40 to 50 minutes, uh, but a light scent still lingers. It's not super offensive, but floral scents, for me, are not my favorite. So, anyway, take the good with the bad. So, especially with a chemical, chemical or organic sunscreen, uh, fragrance and alcohol can cause the sensitivity to worsen because some of those chemical filters uh, can cause sensitive skin to have some issues. So um, anyway, so I'll be doing a long Q&A live stream at the end of sunscreen week. Lots of quotes today. Uh, so we'll talk about all of these factors and I'll bring forward a lot of good comments and questions to discuss as well. So stay tuned for that one. Okay, manufacturer location. This one is made in Japan. SPF. So this one has an SPF 50 plus, which means you're probably getting a little bit higher than 50 SPF. And 30 is what my opinion is the lowest you want to go for daily use. So they've done a good job with that. In terms of the UVA protection factor, this has a PA with four pluses after it. Four pluses is the most you can get. Um, that demonstrates excellent UVA protection. UVA rays can cause skin damage and things like that, and more and more is being researched about them, and a lot of new things are coming to light which hadn't been really widely known about how just how damaging UVA rays can be. So a lot of sunscreens, older sunscreens, probably don't do the best job 
uh, protecting your skin from UVA rays, especially the chemical type ones. So, okay, filters used in this one, we've got a long list. So, and you know, some of these chemical filters have the chemical name, then they've got the trademark name, then they've got the shortened chemical name. Some of them have like six different names. So I'm just trying to relay the information as easily to you as I possibly can. For my patrons, I'll be doing a chart which lists every uh, filter used, uh, what it does, what it blocks, and then the also the alternate names because there's so many of them. I just want to make it as easy to you as possible to understand because some people will recognize certain things but not others. So um, anyway, so the first uh, filter we've got is octanonate which is also known as Uvenil MC80 and that is a clear soluble cosmetically elegant liquid that is most commonly used in chemical sunscreens it absorbs UVB radiation at wavelengths 280 to 320 that's not very helpful for most but and a peak protection at 310 so then we've also got ethyl trexyl triazone which is also known as Uvenil T150 which is a UVB ray absorber. Then we've got Uvenil A+, which is a UVA ray absorber, which is what I talked about a second ago. And then we've also got uh, Tinsorb S, which is a very photostable filter, which absorbs both UVB and UVA rays. So between all those filters, I'm satisfied that they're protecting enough against UVB and UVA rays. So no issues at all with that. You'll see once in a while in some U.S.-made sunscreens that they only have one UVA filter. Usually it's avobenzone, which isn't the best. So that's why some of these Japanese sunscreens are becoming so popular. So keep that in mind. Okay, in terms of the white cast. So it comes out, looks very white. And once you smooth in the skin, it really takes little to no effort. The uh, white cast fades pretty much completely, which makes it very elegant to use sunscreen. So those chemical filters that they've used, most of those have no white cast. Although I'll be reviewing next in the next few days one that contains 20% zinc oxide, and the difference is uh, startling, How just how different it looks. So um, anyway, so they've done a very nice job, very elegant application. And then in terms of the texture, I just showed it's a, kind of a nice lotiony gel texture. And uh, it absorbs nicely, it absorbs clearly, and leaves uh, spreads easily over skin. And it sets to a really nice natural finish, which is non-sticky, which is another uh, thing with some sunscreens. They can set to a really sticky finish, some more than others. And this one sets to a really nice matte finish, which... A lot of that's probably due to the high amount of uh, alcohol in there as well. And I can even smell it just a little bit. So I just wish they could reformulate without a little bit less alcohol. That would make it so much more amazing. But what do you want, right? Especially for the price. So the pH of this one looks to be about six, six and a half maybe. So no issues with that. Okay. Ease of use. So it really does spread nicely over your face. Uh, if you apply other layers of skincare products uh, over it or under it, it really has no pilling, which is nice. I have a feeling that's also from some of the alcohol in it. Um, yeah, so I almost never saw any pilling with this one. Even with the most matte foundations or uh, super hydrating foundations, I really had no issues with it. In my opinion, it's one of the most uh, easily used sunscreens it's really easy to fit into almost any routine uh never pills no not much of a white cast so very very easy to use i was very impressed which is always nice some of them take a lot of effort to to apply some of them are very easy this one's super easy so then we get to uh my criteria of antioxidants and beneficial ingredients and this one doesn't have the most impressive list of beneficial ingredients. Most of the other ingredients in this one are hydrating ingredients or just basic slip ingredients. Uh, we do have a few. So we've got arginine, which is a good hydrating ingredient. Royal jelly extract, which they called out uh, in the informational section about it. It's uh, Royal jelly is good for hydrating and moisturizing skin. Then we've got hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid good hydrating water binding ingredient and then BHT which is an antioxidant 
So not really the most exciting list. And the fact that most of those are towards the very end of the ingredient list makes it even less exciting. So, um, yeah. So that makes it even more important if you're using the sunscreen to use it with a really good hydrating serum or an antioxidant rich moisturizer. So keep that one in mind. It also will help kind of negate, negate some of the effects of the alcohol. Although you can't negate them all, it's not going to hurt. So then we get to apneogenic ingredients. And this one does have a few, not a ton. We've got isopropyl palmitate, dimethicone, cetinol, and then palmitic acid. So not a whole lot. But if you do have very, very acne prone skin, something to think about. Although it's really hard to find a really good sunscreen that's really good for acne prone skin. So I'm trying to think of probably the Purita Water Comfy Block is a good one. You know, when I do my live stream, I'll, uh, we'll talk about some of the sunscreens that did the best and some that did the worst too. So, okay. In terms of animal testing, uh, this is sold in mainland China. Therefore it is not cruelty free performance. So it will certainly protect your skin against sun damage in a very efficient and excellent way. Very aesthetically pleasing to use. Uh, again, to mitigate the effects of the drying denatured alcohol, I'd recommend using this with a hydrating moisturizer, primer, or serum. It wears well, doesn't leave skin looking shiny or greasy at the end of the day, which is a huge thing because so many of them can really, by the end of the day, either make your skin look really, really greasy or really, really dry. So I've got one that I'm going to review as well, which uh, has some hydrating ingredients, but at the end of the day, it really left my skin looking and feeling 10 times more dry than it really was. But overall, this one performs very nicely. It's relatively easy to remove, although I do recommend a good oil-based cleanser because some sunscreen filters can be really stubborn to remove. And especially this one where it's got the polyvinyl alcohol in there, which kind of has that film that it leaves on your skin. So I really recommend a really good cleanser when using this one. And then we get to the price and this is the full size, which is three ounces, 90 milliliters retails on yes style for about $15. That seems to be about the average, which is uh, 17 cents per milliliter, making this one of the most affordable sunscreens I've reviewed so far. Very, very affordable. I think this is probably the most affordable I've reviewed thus far. I'm going to have to double check on that, but super affordable. So out of 15 being perfect, the Biore gets a 10 out of 15, which is decent. Very aesthetically pleasing, although not necessarily the best ingredients for sensitive skin or skin that needs a lot of pampering, things like that. It just doesn't doesn't have a lot of beneficial ingredients, doesn't have a lot of antioxidants, has the alcohol, has the fragrance. Um, so it's a bit iffy, although a lot of people absolutely love it. So if you're a sunscreen hater, uh, this is one I'd probably recommend checking out as well as the Claire's Airy Soft UV Essence, which I've reviewed, I believe last year, um, which is also a great one. So anyway, I'm interested in hearing from you guys if you've had a chance to try this or any of the other Biore sunscreens. Uh, what'd you think of it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you feel moderate about it? So anyway, leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys uh, and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much.